Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So this is my bonus video to the return of the Primark series. I couldn't end it on a Primark. I had to end it on something big, something fabulous, something absolutely golden and glorious. And that had to be the Emperor of Mankind. So sit back, relax and let's discuss the potential return of Big Daddy E. So the Emperor of Mankind is basically the father of the Imperium. He is the leader of men. He created the Primarchs, he basically created the Imperial Truth, and um, of course that is somewhat gone uh, a bit south since 40k has uh, driven on with this timeline. The Emperor is now revered as a god because he sits immobile on the Golden Throne, his little jewel with Horus put him on there, he is neither living nor dead, he's like this psychic essence guarding mankind, through him the Astronomicon works, so without him you're basically going to get swallowed by chaos and spat out the other end, um, it's only because he's got this glorious guiding golden light that ships are able to lock onto it and navigate through the warp and do all that kind of stuff. Now during the Great Crusade, the Emperor set off to unite the race of man. He you know he went out there to try and get everyone to rally up to be under one banner. He saw what chaos was all about. He saw the threat of Xenos. He saw all the threats towards mankind. And it was his job, he saw, he took it on himself, to unite man, and go against this, and make sure that the dominant race in the galaxy was mankind and no other. Of course, he created the Primarchs to lead these vast armies of space marines, each one genetically engineered to perfection. But of course, we all know what happened. Half of them spat their dummy out and they went against the Emperor. We had a massive siege battle over Terra, mankind's homeworld. And in that fight, the Emperor was mortally wounded by Horus because chaos sucks hairy balls and he was entombed on the Golden Throne, where he sits now in the modern story setting. Now, there has been some movement on the law with the Emperor in regards to talking to people while he's on the Golden Throne. One being from the Dark Millennium book, which features a rebooted Gilliman in it. It's all the brand new 8th edition law. There's also a little bit of a tidbit in the Watchers of the Throne by Chris Wright as well. We actually get to see an interaction between the Emperor and Rebuta Gilliman, where basically, by the way, this is a spoiler, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, this is where the Emperor basically just tells Rebuta that, you know, you're not my son, you are a tool, you are a weapon, that is all you are, Rebuta comes to me like, oh my god, I'm just, I'm just a tool, Rebuta, I could have told you that all along, just kidding, I love you Rebuta, but yes, the Primarchs were basically just tools, weapons, they weren't really his real sons, even though some of them looked to him, as a father figure. You can probably understand why the Horus Heresy kind of happened, since he didn't really care for them that much. He, they were basically just a sharp dagger he could unleash upon a foe or a race. Now, one theory is that the Emperor cannot die. He is a perpetual. Uh, the reason for this is that when the Emperor crafted his sons, his prime I shouldn't really call them sons, his weapons, his Primarch weapons um people say that each primarch had a little bit of the emperor for example magnus had his psychic stuff like that gilliman you know his statesmanship all that kind of stuff and it was rumored that um vulcan took um something called uh, being a perpetual now what perpetual means is that you basically cannot die every time you die you come back to life like hey i'm back i'm back baby and stuff like that so people are put two and two together saying well if vulcan is a perpetual surely the gene craft from that perpetualness, is that even a word, perpetualness, um, should have come from the Emperor's genes, because that's where they were all made from. They were actually made from the Emperor. So some people are saying that they should take the Emperor off the Golden Throne and kill him, and when you do kill him, he's basically going to come back because he is a perpetual. Now, there is some rumor linked to this with Cypher. Cypher is supposed to be heading towards the Golden Throne with the Lion Sword for some kind of purpose. People have said maybe he wants to stab the Emperor, kill him, because he knows that the Emperor will be reborn. This is going a bit madness now, but that has been a heavy theory for some years now. Now, the problem behind that theory is that if you kill the Emperor, at the moment, the Emperor sat on the Golden Throne. He's actually keeping chaos at bay. If you don't know, 
Magnus effed up. He messed up very, very badly. And Chaos is basically waiting to breach through the webway, through the Golden Throne. And it's going to absolutely do naughty stuff to Terror. It's going to wipe out Terror if they get their way. It's basically, It was described in the book Arendemski Bodens like... Um, um, like a, a whale, like a whale's carcass, and there's like demons, uh, like sharks floating around it, waiting to take their bite. They're just waiting for that moment to get through and get in there and start ripping on the flesh. So if the Emperor is killed, he's taken off the Golden Throne for no matter how long, a second, two seconds, the door opens. The door is open and chaos is flooding through. So that means if you do kill him, if you do actually dispose of him, and let's say he does come back, let's say go wild, for example, and say he does come back, he starts to feel terror is lost. Ter terror is instantly gone. And I don't even know what horrors then could come through um, through that kind of portal webway kind of dimension thing I'm sure it's going to be a lot worse than anyone is ever going to expect so there's two ways to look at that theory yes the emperor could come back if the theory is true let's say if it, you know the last thing you want to do is kill the emperor demons come through and then the emperor doesn't return you're like oh crap I definitely effed up the emperor is definitely gone now and demons are eating my anus and the last one is the emperor does return back but terror is lost and there's untold horrors released upon the galaxy but if the emperor is back the emperor with his psychic might his power his strength i'm sure he can do something against that tide of darkness death and destruction because at the end of the day it's the emperor of mankind this guy is just i, I can't even fathom i put into words how powerful of a psyker this chap is now the next theory and this is the theory i kind of agree with more than anything else and this is called the star child theory i'm sure a lot of people have heard this already this was actually mentioned i think it was third edition chaos real well is it was it the realm was it realm of i think it was realm of chaos um i, th I think they've actually just released the realm of chaos book they've redone it in like a, another printout um but what this theory is is that the emperor will basically die um, well, taking off the golden throne and his essence, his psychic essence would then go into the warp because when you die, you know, your soul goes into the warp and because there's just so much psychic essence from the emperor, because don't forget he's made from thousands and thousands of shamans who all sacrifice themselves to make this one being, so the story says. Um, so this massive wave of psychicness will wash into the warp and it could do two things. It could completely destroy the chaos gods because this shining light of tide of pure awesome golden energy is there demolishing everything or it can actually make a brand new god for the imperium a good god a good chaos god let's say which is looking out for mankind and not trying to nibble on their bones so if that did happen you could basically wipe out chaos in one fell swoop and if you get rid of chaos from the galaxy everything doesn't really look too bad of course you've got the xenos threats of the necrons the tyranids now the eldar are still always going to be eldar thinking they're better than everyone even though they're a bunch of idiots um but really you've take you've, you've taken out one of the big contenders out in the galaxy one of the ones that manipulates humanity as a whole with you know gifts and favors and all that kind of stuff so if you get rid of chaos then you're definitely on the winning side of the war okay let's go down absolute madness street for now and let's just talk about the actual emperor returning let's just say for madness sake the emperor returns he's back he's back baby he's there in his golden armor he comes back and he looks upon the Imperium in the 40k millennium, what we're ever in now, 41st millennium. There's so much information about the times changed and stuff like that. Because apparently the Inquisition has been deleting stuff because it's the Inquisition. Right, so first things first, the Emperor comes out. He sees this religion to the Emperor because the Emperor is revered as a god now. And oh baby, 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 did you mess up. The Imperial truth is the only truth the Emperor sees. So I can see a massive purge of people straight off the bat straight get getting rid of all the churches everything all the shrines to the emperor revering him as a god that is definitely going to be a no-no in his eyes and i can also see that purge coming to chapters as well so stuff like the black templars who look upon the emperor as a god i can actually see that him ordering other chapters to wipe that chapter out because he does not want that fanatical essence anywhere near him or in his imperium look what happened to the word bearers they started the Muller started the bloody horus heresy off because of their fanatical ways he doesn't want a repeat of that and the black templars represent those fanatical views of the emperor is revered 
as a god. Next up on the chopping block is the High Lords of Terror. Like, they've ever done anything useful before. All they do is bicker and look for power. So they're gone. Anything in that higher command, I can see the Emperor just getting rid of. Of course, he wanted that back in the day, but it's, it's, it's a good old example. Absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. If Horus couldn't handle this essence of power on his shoulders, what do you think a mere mortal could do? Horus was one of the, if not the greatest Primarch the Emperor ever had, and he was corrupted, so what chance does a normal human like me or you have with that kind of power? I can see him rallying a massive army strength of Crusades, just going out into the galaxy, purging. This is going to be like the Great Crusade 2.0. We know Gilliman is back on his side, so I think Gilliman's going to be at his side, you know, daddy or, you know, weapon number five or something, you know, whatever he wants to call him from now on. But Gilliman's got to be there. Gilliman's got to be aiding him, doing everything. I'm sure, I am definitely sure, with the Emperor coming back, that more loyalist Primarchs would return. For example, the Emperor would know what is going on with uh, the Lion. He, he would sense the Lion. He's a bloody you know, massive, this god mode psycho. So he'd know where the lion is, what's up. He'd probably go there and just shake him and wake him up. Get up, lion. And the lion would wake up. And then you have two Primarchs back. He'd probably sense where all the other Primarchs are if they were still alive. So he would know where Corex was. He would know where Glorious Rogo Dawn was, locked in the store, storage cupboard. Um, he would he would find, like, Lehman Russ, um, all that kind of stuff. The Primarchs would definitely return to his side through either being found again or basically the emperor is this beacon being woke back up and they they sense that because of course all the primarchs have some kind of psychic essence in them and they'll just go to him like a moth to a flame now for those traitor primarchs oh you better run because vengeance is best served cold or should i say best served with a fiery flame sword wielded with psychic energy because the emperor is going to be coming for you and he is going to purge you you betrayed him you betrayed the imperium you betrayed mankind and there is no 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 remorse for that you will absolutely be destroyed for the emperor so fulgrim off you go Perturabo, off you go magnus you're just gonna get mind bulleted your soul all, all these souls are just gonna be wiped out like Horace's souls, and they're just going to be, at the end, they're going to be like looking, why did I do this? The Emperor was so good. And that's it. They're gone. They're exploded. Nothing more. So now you have this massive crusade. The demonic Primarchs are in disarray. They're being killed. The Emperor is seeking out his vengeance. Reboot is there. The Lion's there. Lehman Russ is there. Vulcan's popped back up because he can't die. Dawn has got like a new cyber hand. I'm sorry, I'm getting carried away here. Uh, they're, they're all going out. It's the Great Crusade, Mark II. And we're going back out to the galaxy to purge, to take what is ours. And this time, the Emperor's not making a war master. He's leaving no one. The Emperor is going to take command and he is going to lead this until the end. You chose this path, Chaos. You chose this path, Traitor Primarchs. And now you will feel the wrath of the Emperor of Mankind. Right, that is me done for another video. And uh, yeah, that is it. No more no more Return of the Primarchs now. I'm not doing the second or 11 Legions. I'm not going down that tricky, sticky route. This was just a bonus one, just to give you something else, just to give, put a smile on your face. I know it's put a smile on my face. Um, and just one last chance for me to go com complete pure rumor, theory, madness, and just sprout some absolute crap and just enjoy it doing it so thank you for watching this series uh, i really hope you've enjoyed it um if you've got any um uh, ideas of a new series i'm actually thinking of doing maybe heroes of the imperium looking at famous space marines or like imperial guard you know you know heroes basically heroes of the imperium and doing like videos for them and stuff like that but i'll have some more information about that very very soon either on my discord or post it in the community tab of my channel again thank you for watching and have a great day see you now and bye bye